After some heavy investment into holy sites in Ethiopia and the games organized by the queen herself, the province was massively improving in public order. So much in fact, Lysandras was able to leave the region for themselves, while he would attempt to break the Medewi once and for all. An outpost was thus ordered to be constructed in Ptolemais Theron as compensation. Not wanting to attack the entire tribal army at once, the proven commander marched only a small distance, allowing his men to pillage the countryside. Our spy would try to sabotage the enemy supply lines, but just like the other last few schemes, they were discovered and returned wounded. The same happened for our assassination plot. But as Ptolemy was about to prove, brute force might be the way forward as Jason and himself approached Foenike, garrisoned by Trollias, a general of similar fame as Ptolemy. The only true difference between the two was their motivation. Where this lucid commander only was working for money, Ptolemy attacked in an act of justice for this ruthless aggression shown by the Seleucids during this war. This time Phoenike would be occupied instead of liberated, as the pharaoh felt he had more than enough men to protect the port. It even possessed a grain supply making an invasion deeper into Syrian lands possible. The original plan was just to recapture the two lost Egyptian settlements, but this this changed everything. During the battle, Jason proved himself to be a worthy leader of men, granting him legalization for a larger army. You know, pikes, slingers, stuff like that. Lysandras, however, was rather confident in his situation, but I doubt he expected what happened next. Almost 7,000 native Ethiopians approached along the road. With some of his men still out foraging, this was a troubling situation. Not willing to lose prestige and run, he took up the challenge. The original plan was to form a defensive formation with the main army, while the cavalry and elephants hid behind the dunes. However, due to some excellent scouting by the Medewi, our plan was foiled, forcing Lysandros to pick a reactionary strategy. Clearly knowing the elephants better than us, the natives used their spears efficiently to take down our largest units. A major blow even further pressuring the Egyptian commander. Eventually, through his own effort, they made a breakthrough on their left, slowly overwhelming the enemies on that flank. But due to the high pressure from throughout this battle on the pikemen, many started to waver and even break. So close to winning, and yet still so far. Knowing the battle was lost, he blew the horns and ordered a full-on retreat. Sadly, this was a battle he couldn't escape the consequences of. The Medewi kept up the pursuit, eventually executing Lysandras. As the Egyptian general had humiliated the Medewi on several occasions, no one believed the official statement of him getting a clean death. A tragedy. Without a single army in the south, and not wanting to lose their progress once more, diplomats were sent to the Ethiopian tribe in hopes of finding a peaceful solution. Surprisingly, they were actually willing to accept payment for standing down. An expensive endeavor, but one well worth every penny so long it gives us time to re-establish a new army in the south again. A task that would be granted to the son of the pharaoh, Ptolemy III. And no, he wasn't just given the position because of his legacy, but rather his brilliant mind for tactics and humility, which was the downfall of his predecessor. Oh, and just to avoid any confusion, we'll say the pharaoh is the only one who we will refer to as Ptolemy, while the son instead will be called Junior. Got it? Great. To the north, the invasion of Syria was about to enter a new phase. Taking a cautionary approach, Ptolemy discreetly reached the crossroads. He could either take the direct road to the Seleucid capital, but as it was so deep into enemy territory, he and Jason set their eyes on Demetrias instead. A fine settlement with massive walls that could give us a perfect base of operations. No army seemed to be present, highly unusual for a nation of this stature to have such a weak defensive perimeter. 
Maybe it was their talents to the north, who was keeping them occupied. They have made great progress so far, so I wouldn't put it behind them. Jason took charge of the siege, constructing light siege towers aplenty, while Ptolemy established a fortification right behind that. Back home, apart from the library itself, which was under construction, the Temple of Memphis would be dedicated to Hathor Mat to celebrate joy, love, truth and justice. Not to forget wealth, which in time would pay for the massive fleet under construction at our wharves. They are going to be crucial if we are to take back Cyprus. Because at the moment this is where the Seleucids stock their fleet, which granted them easy access to our grain supply in Phoenicia. To our luck the few heroic sailors in the port were so brilliant they easily broke the first wave with two quick rammings on each ship. The same would happen the second time around, where the Seleucid marines were forced into abandoning ship as it sunk to the bottom of the sea. A decisive victory. Surprised by the resolve of the garrisoning fleet, the admiral would retreat back to Salamis, where he would reinforce his army for future attacks. We are of course doing the same, but with even bigger ships than the Seleucids. During his march south, Junior decided not to waste too many Egyptian lives. Instead, also seeking aid from the citizens of our former client state, the Blemi. Their archers are both skilled and familiar with the land and its harsh environments. If the Medewi are to attack again, and I'm certain they will, we need their support once again. We would also build two shrines, one in honor of Athena and another for Horus and Apollon. The good news is our many agents have recovered from their wounds, allowing us to keep a close eye on the Medewi movement. They won't be able to surprise us anymore. Attrition was a minor problem during the siege of Demetrius, for both armies actually, as the harsh summer brought severe burns and our men to overheat in their heavy armor. If we stayed like this, our army would disperse before the invasion had begun. Thus, Jason ordered a rushed attack on the walls. It all happened so fast the enemy garrison didn't get to react. A slaughter. For this city to become the backbone of our invasion, we will need assistance from the Persian locals. Where the Seleucids saw them as inferiors, we will make them our equals letting them fight side by side with our phalanxes. After a quick look around, Ptolemy realized Europus, one of the border towns of the Tigris, was undefended too. Seeing this as a great opportunity, the pharaoh used his momentum and struck. Suffering no more than 12 casualties just proved the excellence of this brilliant force mustered for this war. The town was occupied giving us a great defensive position. From here, we can basically tunnel through any Seleucid armies. It must be the Temple of Athena that gave us clarity or something, but Ptolemy realized he didn't have the manpower to take all of the Seleucid Empire and would thus settle this dispute once Antiochus and his band of thugs were pushed to the other side of the river. If we can even accomplish that, that is. We should be able to, right? Like so far they've shown no signs of resistance. This is all too easy. Our improved relations with the Igarimen seem to have pleased the Carthaginian trade empire to the west of us. Where they once appeared to be a future threat, now all they want is to trade for our gold and glassware. Now they should be a powerful ally for the future compared to the minor Rhodians. We also established trade with the newly independent city-state from our former settlement side. May their civilization thrive in the new leadership. All this gold we in turn offered as a gift to our eastern neighbor, Nabatea, in an attempt to improve relations with them too. Avoiding a conflict with them is crucial for our already struggling empire. And this is not an understatement, as the Seleucid fleet returned for vengeance this time with more success than before. Seeing a Rhodian transport was on its way, the still improving navy was forced to leave port if Phoenicia is to return back to Egyptian control and not under the Rhodians. 
they would wait at the edge of our naval range for a few extra reinforcements before they make their move. Ptolemy could have sent Jason to their rescue, but as the pharaoh was determined to keep pushing, that wasn't considered an option. Instead, Jason should take point at Europus, while Ptolemy himself marched for Epimea and inevitably Antioch. It seems like we've hit their food supply. We aren't in direct food crisis any longer like we've been in the past, but this will surely help avoid that to ever happen again. Oh, and if you wondered where most of our gold is going at the moment, all I can say really is Junior has this crazy idea about these Meroan spearmen being decent warriors. Personally, I just think it was part of a bargain to get access to these elephants, but that is his decision. The fleet itself required a lot of our income too, you know, maintenance and such. All worth it so long they can keep our coast clear of pirates and solicit scum. Being the ever opportunistic schemer that he was, Jason saw an opportunity to disrupt the Seleucid production in Mesopotamia. Not only did he abandon his post for this, but also disregarded Ptolemy's plan of only occupying towns west of the Tigris. At first it might have been foolish and reckless, but this actually granted us some much needed intel that explained much of our so far easy conquest. It turns out that since the start of our invasion, the Seleucids were on their own campaign in Armenia, having pretty much reduced the once powerful nation to rubble. A terrifying sight to see knowing this could have been Egypt too, if not for the many heroic victories by the hand of Jason. After hearing of this, Ptolemy immediately besieged the Seleucid capital Antioch. A clear mistake as this only angered our age-old enemy. The Medewi declared war on us again as expected. Being more prepared than last time, the heir of Egypt ordered the assassination of their most important general, making sure they wouldn't be able to use their past experience against us. This allowed Junior to approach the city more easily. Our fleet, now adopting the name Achilles, continued to frighten the enemy ships, allowing them to form a blockade around Salamis. Soon it will be ours. But as I said, the siege of Antioch angered our enemy, and I didn't mean the Medewi or a few ships but Antiochus himself, along with all the armies from the Armenian campaign. All of them were on their way with his son Antiochus II approaching from the south. Well aware Mygdonia was impossible to defend, Jason saw no other option but to retreat back to Europus. But not before engaging the son of the Seleucid Emperor first. There was a clear difference between the arms of the Seleucids compared to the many tribal civilizations we fought in the past. Antiochus II had brought Ballista to the field, forcing Jason to abandon the high ground on which he had deployed upon. Up front, he placed his reliable pikemen with newly recruited Persian spearmen on each flank. The other Persian cavalry, which he acquired just before the battle, would be placed on the left. The rest would act as reserves. The Persians made an attempt to seize the Seleucids from firing at us by charging. But as they got closer, the other Daidoshi reacted by sending their own cavalry after us. However, after performing a faint retreat, we smashed them from multiple directions. This instigated the rest of the fight that was about to ensue. With the heir of the Seleucid Empire killed, Jason escaped back to Europus. As expected, Mygdonia fell the month after. But not only that, an army known as the Gods of War, led by Archelaus, came to the rescue of Antioch. Realizing the danger Ptolemy was in, the siege was lifted with him fleeing back to Demetria. 
Now the true challenge begins.